Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today I'm going to be talking about the high damage roles in Paladins versus more of the supportive roles. The reason I bring this up is because on the Paladin subreddit there was a post that went into detail about the current state of casual and how people just insta-lock who they want to play. This means that if, for example, you wanted to go and play Knessa, you would be putting your team at a major disadvantage in comparison to playing like a healer, like Ceres or something along those lines, because there's already two to three people that have gone and insta-locked a DPS or flanking characters. This, especially in the lower levels, is a very big problem, even more so if they have absolutely no idea on how to go and play the champion and the game just turns into a one-sided shitfest. Now let's go and set the scene and do a quick overview of why this goes and occurs less in Overwatch. Now yes I'm talking about Overwatch in a palette in the video, but it really does give some insight into why it's a very big problem here. In Overwatch, as we all know, you can go and swap heroes on the fly. So as the game goes and starts, everybody just kind of shuffles in line, people go and talk in chat, people go and talk, talk over voice chat, and then in the end of it, it comes to some form of, of an agreement and a team composition is formed. Now generally there is a bit of an argument over who is the DPS characters and who is the tank or the healer, but 9 times out of 10 that is solved before the match actually starts. But the thing is, if the DPS is not doing so well, then the flaming really just comes in quite hard. Team subs flaming the DPS overall, forces him to go and swap, another player goes and takes that place, and then overall you try it again and rinse and repeat until you get a working formula. In Paladins, that is obviously not the case. I don't think it's because people don't want to go and play tank or a healer, it's just you have to be 100% faithful in your team. You have to commit to a whole game of just that role. While most people would be okay with doing half a game and then going and swapping out to let's say more of a DPS or a damage -y class, doing a whole game is quite tiring for some people. And the reason why is because you have to have 100% faith in your team. You are committed to that whole game. And if your teammates go and start slacking, then in the end of it, you can't really go and pick them up. You're more of a supportive character. You have to go and help them up. Now, with that said, with the imp implementation of Ceres, Ceres does a lot of damage. And a lot of people are going flank Ceres and just trying to go and get a lot of damage down. Obviously, that would be more of a last resort when people are trying to go and do it as a first resort. But with all of that said, her healing is really good as well. And overall, that's why she is quite a good character. But with that said, in general, if you're playing a very healy healer and in the end of it, your team just starts going down the shitter, you kind of start losing faith. And after this has happened a few times, then in the end of it, you might go and result to insta locking because you don't believe the team. Doesn't even matter if you don't know who's on your team, you're just in a random lobby, you go, and go into it. You really don't have much faith in your team in order to go and perform and that's why these insta locks go and happen. Personally, I think this is a good reason why a lot of people are going picking up Pip or Fernando or Ruckus. Not only do they go and provide utility for your team, you know, Ruckus being a tank, Fernando being that tank with a big shield, Pip being, you know, the pseudo heal healer and whatnot, but they also go and do quite a lot of damage. And in the end of it, if the shit goes and hits the fan, you can try to go and back up your team, not only with your utility, but also with the damage. Now I've gone and said it many times that Paladins has a MOBA-like feel, and from the champion select this is very evident. In League of Legends, this problem of people going and not picking the quote unquote right champions does go and occur, but it's definitely less prevalent due to people going and cold in their lane, and if there is a bit of a contestion, whoever went and cold first wins, which is generally solved by the three other people in the lobby. This also happens due to everybody knowing that you should be running one top, one jungler, one mid, two bot. But with League of Legends, you don't necessarily need a tank or a healer in order to go and win the game. It would definitely go and help, and the meta is defined around healers and tanks and damage dealers and whatnot, but it's not completely set in stone, and so overall people can be a little bit more flexible. With Paladins, well, you would very much like a healer and you would very much like a tank and someone has to go and play, so it is a little bit more tricky. Plus, nobody goes and calls their role in their champion select and overall, that just kind of makes it very, very difficult in order to go and work out in that 30 or so seconds what your team is actually going to be doing. In the end of it, it's just go and lock in who you want to go and play and if the team works out, it works out and if it doesn't work out, well, bad luck. 
Now, how does this get fixed? In the Reddit post, OP went and suggested that there should be a bit of an incentive with EXP or gold in order to get people to go and play these more off roles. Now, I like the idea, I like the thought behind it, but this goes and promotes a more static team composition for every single game, which is a problem in itself. You want people to be a little bit invent inventive, you want people to be, you know, a little bit more unique with their picks and whatnot, but you don't want it to be too unique that you're going to be strained so far from the meta that overall you're going to be putting your team at a disadvantage. It is a very, very slippery slope. The way League of Legends gets around this, for ranked at least, is that players can go and select what roles they want to go and play, and if they can't be slotted in, then they're auto-filled into a team. Now, this could potentially work in Paladins, but with that said, the meta is never really truly set. You have your damage, you have your, you know, flanking character, you have a healer, you have a tank, but then you could potentially want two damage and no flank, or you want more healers and less tanks. And none of these are wrong or right. And that's what I was talking about before, about the uniqueness of the meta and the uniqueness of picks. Going and having a set way to go and play the game is a really, really bad mindset. The reason why it works in League of Legends is because you have set lanes. There has to be, you know, one or two people in a certain lane. And if you have no people in the lane, well, that doesn't really make any sense. But here, Roll on a battlefield, it's a three dimensional type game. Everybody's everywhere if they want to be, and in the end of it, you can't really go and say for people to go here, there, or everywhere. And that makes it very, very confusing in order to go and get a system like that to work in this game. So, overall, what I'm trying to go and say is there isn't any apparent solution right now. Now, a good solution, well, the way to go and help it out at least, would be to go and develop more champions that could go and act as healers, but also do some damage, or tanks that could go and do some damage. It's also, this whole problem is due to the fact that Paladin simply doesn't have enough champions. And I know this is in direct comparison to what I said a few days ago with the Lian video. Thanks for disliking that one, by the way. I, I get why people disliked it. It was my opinion, and I was wrong on some points. But in the end of it, damn, you guys went hard. I I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. You guys went and said loud and clear what you guys wanted to go and say. And I like that type of stuff. I like that people were really, really vocal. But with that said, back on topic. So, champions, we do need more of them. But... Same what I was saying a few days ago, they need to be good as well. So you have to really go and think, okay, how mechanical, how complex, how easy, and all in all, you kind of need more in the end of it. Now, a common pick that I've gone and see do a ton of damage, but also go and do a ton of healing, is Grover. He heals quite nicely with that area effect, but he also hits really hard with his axes. Plus, he has some sick crowd control with his right click. And overall, he is a really, really cool champion. I love his kit. I love his identity. His ultimate is cool as well. Overall, really, really nice. But looking over the champion roster, there isn't really many healers in the first place. But with high res champion output, as I've talked about before, I have no doubt this will be filled out eventually. So in the end of it, I don't think it's a problem with the game itself. I think it's more of a growing pain. And as Paladins goes and grows more and more, when more champions are implemented into the game, more people go and start playing this game, I think overall people go and get a little bit more excited about playing these healing and tank champions. But with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go and give it a like. Rating Barbara Nats, Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under, out.